past few years, there's been a growing trend in the Indian market where customers have shifted to SUVs. However, a stark fact of the market is that 48% of consumers still prefer hatchbacks. That's almost half the market. So something like the Hyundai Grand i10 Neos becomes very important for Hyundai as a brand because if you can sell this successfully, it's big numbers, it's big market share, and there's a lot at stake. The first i10, then the Grand i10, and now the e Neos. This is the third generation car. And we're going to have a look at what this offers compared to the last Grand Item, compared to the competition and see whether this can change what is currently a rather depressive market. Can this bring about sales success for Hyundai? We try and find out today. Now we've seen some stark design changes as far as the first and the second generation of the i10 go. The first generation was an absolutely brand new design from Hyundai, second generation was a stark change. But the third generation is much of an evolution. It's quite similar in ways to the Grand i10. What I like about the design, I like the big headlights, I like the projector lamps, I like the big cascading grille. The LEDs have been integrated, the daytime running lamps have been integrated quite well. You get projector fog lamps on certain versions. So on that aspect, it's good. You've got these bonnet creases. So they've tried to give the car a lot of functionality, a lot of definition as far as design is concerned. I also quite like the 15 inch wheels that are on the top option, the Asta version that we are testing today. On the lower versions, you get 14 inch either steel wheels with wheel caps, of course, or alloy wheels, but I think they don't really give it the kind of substance or the kind of stance that the 15 inch wheels give them. The sides are also quite nice. You see multiple uh, sort of strong design elements on the sides. You see that strong shoulder line just below the window. You see the lower door line. So it, it, that also looks quite functional, but I have to say the rear looks a bit of a disappointment to me because it's too evolutionary. It looks quite similar to the older Grand i10 and to be honest, even looks close to some Tata products. So could they have done better? Yes, I think they could have. I like the Neos badging though, that looks quite nice. The blue in the eye stands out quite well. But overall, I think it's a balanced design. But is it a design masterpiece? Is it something that's a memorable design? I don't think so. I think it's quite balanced and I think Hyundai could have done better in this. Now the exterior design of the Grand i10 Neos might not be revolutionary, but the interior is. You see, one thing that they've done, which I really like about it, one thing that Hyundai has done is that there are no beige options. I love that. I hate beige interiors. I'm sick of seeing them. And I'm quite happy to see this sort of ivory white and black combination that we get here. First praise goes to the seats. Uh, they're very supportive. The cushioning is very nice. And I have to say, as somebody with a week back, I love how the seats are. They give me a great feel. They make me very comfortable inside the car. The 8 inch touch screen here also works quite well, but I think the positioning could have been quite better. Uh, they haven't really positioned it well. And when you're in a brightly lit area, when you've got sunlight around it, it fades out the screen, which is never nice. It's, it's not easy to use then. Other than that, the screen, the functionality, the responsiveness, the intuitiveness works quite well. You get lots of equipment. It's a Hyundai, of course. So uh, you get twin airbags, you get ABS, you get climate control. You even on the range topping Aster versions, you even get a wireless charging uh, port here that you can use to charge your phones. You get a cubby hole here. You get this nice sort of a hexagonal kind of a honeycomb kind of a design. Uh, I think it's an interesting touch because it's unique. So it stands out. Uh, the cubby spaces are pretty good. And I have to say, on some of the versions, you get this grey upholstery. Now, this might be a very sort of subjective or individual factor, but I quite like it. It's a nice break from the conventional brown and black seats. On the upper versions, you can also get, depending on what variant you pick, contrast roofs, all black interiors. So from that perspective, Hyundai offers a lot of functionality. But one feel that you get inside the cabin of the Grand i10 Neos, the one factor is that it reeks of quality. For its segment, it's competing against the Swift. It just feels better built, uh, the plastics feels better, the equipment feels better, the steering feels very nice to hold and in that aspect I think there's a definite plus as far as the transition from the Grand i10 to the Grand i10 Neos is concerned. The Grand i10 has seen a lot of success in India, now in its third gen I can vouch for it personally because my mother for the past 10 odd years has been driving i10s. Uh, we bought her the 2008 i10, the first gen. In 2014, we bought her the grand i10. And so this feels like home. This feels like something I'm very familiar with. 
because it's a car I've always seen in my family. So there are a lot of positives to the car. So let me start with the positives of the Grand i10 Neos. First, you can actually feel how stiff the chassis is, how well the whole car is put together, how well the suspension is tuned because it feels like a cohesive unit. You can feel on bad roads, on good roads, uh, it's, it's just a fantastically stiff chassis that does exactly what it's asked to do. Uh, you know, I, like it, it was interesting, uh, I was talking to the editor of the magazine Ruth and he was driving the i20 and the discussion point was that the big jump that the i20 made from the first gen to the second gen was huge. It is a stark difference. In the i10, I believe it's an even starker difference compared to the second gen i10 to the third gen i10 Neos. So that way, the car feels very well put together. It balances itself. It drives very well. The steering itself, I mean, you get a lot of feel which is rare in these cars or rather in today's cars. So you get to feel exactly what the wheels are doing, exactly what the road is like and it feels absolutely fantastic to drive. Uh, engine options, you get two engines. You get the 1.2 petrol, you get the 1.2 diesel. Same engines that were offered on the last i10 but with uh, slightly more efficiency improvements. Uh, gearboxes also, interestingly, you get now. Earlier, the last gen i10 was only offered on, a one, uh, on the 1.2 petrol with the torque converter gearbox. On this case, now they offer an AMT automatic both on the petrol and the diesel. Now, uh, on the diesel, the AMT works quite well. There's lots of torque, you can play around with it and it's absolutely nice to drive. On the petrol, the AMT doesn't work as well. Either in too high a gear or when you press the throttle really long to go somewhere, it hunts for gears. So I'm not sold on the 1.2 AMT petrol. Refinement wise, the petrol engine works really well. The diesel engine, I think, is a little too loud for the segment. I think there's too much diesel noise coming inside the cabin. So that's, that's something they have to work with. Tractability and drivability wise, both the petrol and the diesel work quite well. They're quite efficient, they're quite uh, usable for everyday use. So from that perspective, the chassis is fantastic. The suspension setup really works well. And I have to say, it's actually, you know, older days, the Hyundai image was that the suspension was too soft. At high speeds, you would feel a little sick. They would get a little wary. But in this case, especially with the i20, the Creta, the Venue, and now the Grand i10 Neos, the suspension is so well set up. And I think that's Albert BM, and the, he's the gentleman who is now in charge of chassis development X BMW M. That's, he's made a remarkable effort or a remarkable difference on how Hyundai chassis and the platforms feel. And to the extent that the Grand i10 Neos on really broken roads can actually feel a little too stiff. But I think for me, that's a positive. I would rather have a little too stiff car than have a car that's too soft and makes the passengers feel like they're about to vomit. So from that perspective, chassis, perfect. Suspension setup, near perfect. Engines, quite good. Transmissions, the manuals are fine. The AMTs, I'm not sold on, especially on the petrol. The other remarkable difference that the i10 has is on the interior quality. Just the whole way the car feels, the way you shut the door, the way the door locks feel, the way uh, the soft touch surfaces, the 8 inch uh, touch screen here or the small digital display I have in front of the driver, it's fantastic. You've got all the features you want, you've got climate control, you've got projector headlights. So all that works really well. In fact, even on the space front, it's terrifically well done. The rear seat, even with somebody like me, 5'9", sitting in the front, I can easily have somebody taller than me sitting behind me. There's enough space. And special mention should also go to the seats. I love the seats. Uh, I'm somebody who has a slip disc who has a weak back and the cushioning the seats provide, the support the seats provide, it's fantastic. In this segment of cars, there's never been a better seat. And I'm talking about experience of 25 years. So from that aspect, it works fantastically. The seats are great, both front and rear. You've even got enough space, almost enough space to fit three people in the rear. The boot is big enough. From all that perspective, Grand i10 really ticks all the boxes. What it misses out, unlike the venue, it doesn't have the Hyundai Blue Link technology that allows you to call the uh, call center, do lots of other stuff. Also, one more problem, uh, I'm not a fan of the 8-inch touchscreen. Yes, it looks well, yet it works well, but there's so much light inside the cabin, you know, it's got a big glass house, that in sunny areas, the screen is almost unreadable. So for me, that's a definite no. 
but every other aspect uh, especially given the pricing especially uh, what hyundai wants to project is that this is a swift rival i believe it is yes it might not have the brand name of the swift the swift is somebody that um, is a boy racer likes to drive but honestly this feels like a better car to drive than the swift and it's cheaper than the swift so i think given the price factor given the quality factor given the driving factor given how well balanced the chassis is suspension is the grand iten neos is going to be another winner on hyundai's hands which is not a surprise because both the iten and the grand iten were already sales successes so i think hyundai is just building on more stuff or more success that they've had could i wish for more yes i would have wished for a better transmission i would have wished for a slightly better play screen that would allow me to look at it properly when the sun is out but no i'm not i'm not complaining at all actually it, it the car works well it's a great product and it's really well balanced and for me that takes all the boxes